builders, Jake Adams here, and I happen to be on a road trip in South Florida, and um, I've just taken a small detour here in Fort Lauderdale to visit Biota Aquariums. So I kicked off this year with a trip to Palau and visited Biota Palau, where a lot of fish are captive bred by Tom Bowling and the crew. Um, also a lot of real cool corals, and Biota Aquariums here is the place where the, all the fish and corals and animals and livestock come to before they're distributed across the United States. So let's go inside and take a look. What's up, Kevin? How's it going? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. My this pleasure. Is, this is also Jake. My What's going on? So we're here at uh, Biota Aquariums, and I've already just uh, given a little bit of intro. And uh, yeah, man, you got a really cool facility. I'm actually really glad I make the made the time to come and, and visit you, my friend, and also this uh, this new facility you got. So uh, tell us about uh, what this place is all about. So basically, we bring in the animals that Tom Bowling grows in Palau at the Biota Marine Life Center and we condition it here. So we bring them in, all the invertebrates go in these two systems, they're isolated, and then uh, basically let them, you know, adjust, get used to artificial lights, and then uh, sell them wholesale to pet stores in three to four weeks. Yeah, so this is a 12 by six foot trough. We're running about 15 inches of water. It's around 800 and something gallons. Simple ASM G5 skimmer over there, some G4 radions. We are running them very high, right, 90% intensity. We have a variety of different animals in here. The really popular green finger leathers from Palau. Uh, there's some heterozenia, the true uh, nephthia. We've got a variety of zoanthids, but um, yeah, some, some sand bed action going on, mostly for just keeping the corals organized. We have a second trough over here with a few uh, small veraca clams as well, cultured in Palau, a lot more finger leathers. Again, simple setup, a little less light in this system. And um, yeah, so then we have a clam trough behind us over here. And right now, all the protein skimmers are off, so, so we can get a good view of everything. But obviously, normally they are running, and there's a little bit louder and splashier over yeah, here. Yeah, everything's nice and pretty simple. This is just a sump tied into that one. We needed more space, but you know, there's no reason to have an additional sump the skimmers right in there. The holding system. So you don't really have like a dedicated filter for these tanks, right? It's Not just circulation, flow, protein skimming. We do uh, have the luxury of uh, Gulf Stream water nearby, so we ah, do use natural seawater. That's the secret. So, but we don't change that much. We have uh, to compensate more for evaporation in an air-conditioned warehouse than salinity control. So, but we change maybe 20 percent uh, every 10 days. Right. So this is our fish holding system. Really simple. Again, poly tanks, indestructible. Um, blocks with foam, four inch drains. I'm a big proponent of flow and self-cleaning tanks. So uh, they're, they're around, they've got circular flow, keeps them nice and clean. We've got some uh, first ever groupers there for Palau at the Tom Ray. Here's the infamous blotched anthias. Pretty exciting, I love these guys. Also known as the Borbonius. Yeah, can't kill them actually. Wow, super strong fish. Here's a few uh, rainbirds. This is the staple Palau, Captain Fred Rainford fish that we sell. Great fish, eats everything, pellets, flake, you name it. Here's some uh, Linianus rabbits, golden line rabbits. This was in conjunction with the hatchery and the College of Palau. One thing I'm kind of surprises me is I've always loved rabbit fish for like home aquariums, but they're way more popular to eat than to keep in aquariums, right? Yeah, ironically, the hatchery that Tom runs used to be a rabbit fish hatchery for restoration or restocking. So, uh, super popular fish to eat, but yeah, we know them as good grazers. Uh, here's some Watchmen Sink Discobies. Two uh, clowns for the biota kits mixed in. Those are not from Palau. And here's some mandarins. Oh, this is just one of the coolest stories that I have ever been a part of. Just uh, these mandarin gobies, and from the video, you probably can't tell for scale, but they're probably just an inch and a quarter. You know, probably just pushing like four centimeters. Everybody loved watching your uh, mandarins eat flake. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, very cool. That's another take of smaller mandarins here. So we, this is really the only fish we actually uh, grow out here. Most of the fish we get in, we just condition, feed, and send on. These guys, we actually wean off of live food. So we hatch our team in here, but we will not sell them until- And what do you try to feed them? They really like frozen cyclops. Okay. Yeah, we use the Ocean Nutrition and the V2O. They, they really like that mix. We, we use the Calanus when they get a little bigger, um, but uh, basically the cyclops, probably more excited to see these guys. These yeah, so there's a tank full of baby 
uh, yellow tangs. I actually haven't seen them at this size yet, where they're still just like a little bit translucent. Yeah. It's super duper cool. It is cool. We're experimenting with actually uh, getting them in earlier and settling them here so that they ship better. And uh, they need a lot of surface area to settle, so you need a, a big tank. So I know you're a wholesaler, but what do you estimate that these, these are going to retail for? These are going to retail for 60 to $70. Okay, very good. Yeah, nice. captive bred. And they, they've improved dramatically on the, the shape and color over the first batches. So the captive bred coral beauty angelfish and um, pork tail bunnies, of course, people have seen before. but. Yeah, definitely. If you haven't seen the video already, those uh, I did a feature on how captive bred angelfish are made, and it's uh, one of my better, more challenging videos, and really, really fascinating, the whole process. Yeah, I'm amazed. These guys, the color, they come in just perfect. They're just like a, yeah, they're the perfect color for a coral beauty. No funky, you know what's going on, not too blue, not too dark. No, but uh, show us how you keep uh, all these systems filtered um, with just fish and no real uh, decorations or anything, no yeah. live rock. Yeah, so super basic. We got the poly tanks, like I explained before. Uh, each system has its own common sump. These are just uh, 300 gallon Rubbermaid sumps, four inch drains. Uh, there's a dedicated flow. Uh, return with a 1200 watt UV, which is really important. Then we're using the aquarium engineering skimmers with the bio towers. So it's really a simple design. We really haven't even found that we need much mechanical filtration with the type work. Dude, these we're tanks, using. you've been here for a year and a half, but these tanks look like they were set up last week. Everything's just super clean. And what I love about these skimmers is um, they're actually air driven protein skimmers. And I wrote a story about the awesomeness of air driven skimmers. And I don't think I've seen commercial uh, air-driven, air-powered protein skimmer in a really long time. So it actually kind of threw me off guard when I first saw them. Yeah, I find that they run really consistent with that injected air. And uh... So you've been talking about um, an easy way to get people into the hobby um, in a really, truly all-in-one package. So tell the viewers you know, about your tank and what, uh, you know, what, what's really uh, your mission here. Yeah, the mission is to create new hobbyists, marine hobbyists, that is, that, that stay in the, in the trade. And so ironically, when I met Tom Bowling in 99, he was selling a complete uh, seahorse package in Australia, a complete kit. And, it, and I was at ORA at the time, and it was always the goal to have an all aquacultured aquarium. Well, here we are, fast forward 17, 18 years later, and we finally brought this tank to market and it's, it's So take it from the top. Tell us what this tank is and how this gets people started in the hobby. Yeah, so this tank is a 13 gallon fluval aquarium and you order it, it gets shipped to your house. You fill it up with seawater following some simple instructions and some YouTube video support. And then a live rock gets shipped to your house that is actually biologically active, shipped wet, moist, three day ground. And then the fish and corals are overnighted um, once you've received your rock. So basically the whole aquarium, including the interior components and the live animals are coming from us direct to you. Therefore coming from our controlled environment to this tanks with no possibility so everything's for disease. quarantined, no pests, no parasites, very limited potential for even algae, right? Exactly. So in, yeah, in the hobby, as you know, the trade is just um, no matter how well you build your systems, when you're bringing in fish from multiple different sources and supply chains, you're going to have some issues. So the, the idea behind this being these animals have been here, they're conditioned, they're ready, they're disease free, and then they go straight to your home. So it just really limits a lot of the variables that a lot of new hobbyists have no control over. And there's only one size. That's it right now, 13 so, and a half gallons. 13 and a half gallons, and how much is uh, one of these complete setups? They're 659 shipped to your house. 659, with, comes with the light, that comes with the pump, that comes with all kinds of animals, or like a, a basic stock list of animals. Um, very cool, so yeah, let's probably make a, a pretty good holiday gift if any of your reefers are looking to get some uh, of your family members or loved ones, you know, a really nice entry level tank, so. Uh, Cool, thanks a lot, Kevin. Thank you, now it's great that people that have never had saltwater aquariums are, are keeping these tanks for six months to 12 months and, and saying, what else can I buy? What else can I, you know, they're ready to stay in the hobby or go to the local fish store and, and buy a 20 or 30 gallon aquarium. So that, that's really our goal. That means we've succeeded, so we're pretty excited. Awesome, well, uh, more power to you and uh, thanks for the tour, buddy. I will uh, catch you at another show here in the future, but best of luck with the uh, Biote Aquariums and. I will do my best to share the captive bread love out on the interwebs. I know you will. Thank <laughs> you.